In the history of commercial aviation, engine upgrades have been vital for manufacturers to maintain competitiveness. Even aging aircraft designs can stay relevant by updating their engines. For instance, the NG or MAX series of the 737 or the NEO series of Airbus aircrafts have all been extremely successful in updating the previous generation's engines with newer, more efficient designs. That's why the introduction of the new CFM Rise engine, which is the subject of our video today, will be the next wind of change contributing to the revolutionary upgrade of any aircraft manufacturer. But before we start, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please like and comment, and don't forget to subscribe so you'll be the first to see our next videos. Now let's dive in. To understand the significance of the CFM Rise engine, it is essential to delve into the historical context of aircraft propulsion. The journey of jet engines began with rudimentary designs and has progressed to advanced power plants that can propel aircraft to remarkable speeds and altitudes. Turbofan engines, known for their substantial bypass ratios, have been pivotal in this development. A bypass ratio, for instance, of 10 to 1 indicates that for every kilogram of air that passes through the core, 10 kilograms bypass it, contributing to thrust without undergoing the entire combustion process. Based on that principle, engine makers chose to improve the efficiency majorly by increasing the fan diameter, which would help the engine generate larger air mass without having to increase the speed. And larger air mass means more powerful thrust. That's why turbofan engines have been getting bigger over time. However, the problem here is that when the engines get bigger, they obviously become heavier, not only because of the bigger size of the fan, but also the required bigger size of the nacelle. As a result, the quest for heightened efficiency has driven the exploration of alternative propulsion systems such as unducted fan or prop fan engines. These engines, unlike traditional turbofans, operate with open rotors and no protective nacelle casing, allowing for the propulsion of a larger air mass and potentially achieving greater efficiency gain. The concept of unducted fan technology dates back to the 1980s with notable projects like the Pratt & Whitney Allison 578 Delta X-Ray and the General Electric G36. The Allison 578 Delta X-Ray was an experimental aircraft engine designed to power proposed profan aircraft such as the Boeing 7J7 and the MD-91 and MD-92 derivatives of the McDonnell Douglas MD-80. Its design was based on the core of the Allison T-701 heavy lift helicopter turboshaft engine which first ran in 1975. The 578DX featured a geared counter-rotation propulsion system with Hamilton standard propellers and was aimed to fly at Mach 0.72 and operate from runway strips ranging from 2,000 to 3,000 feet. It was planned to come in two sizes targeted to power passenger airliners seating between 100 and 160 passengers. One variant with 10,000 shaft horsepower, 7,500 kilowatts, features a 23 to 1 compression ratio and a larger variant with 16,000 shaft HP, 1 2,000 kilowatts, and a 33 to 1 pressure ratio. The joint venture for the development of the engine was announced by Allison and United Technologies Aircraft Engine Division Pratt & Whitney on March 14, 1986. And there is a fact about the reason for the collaboration, which was because Pratt & Whitney did not have an engine core in the size range of 10,000 to 16,000 shaft required for the 7J7's planned 1992 certification date, and Allison sought to re-enter the commercial airline engine market. On the other hand, the GE36 was developed by General Electric Aircraft Engines, with its CFM international partner, Snecma, taking a 35% share in its development. The engine was part of NASA's Advanced Turboprop Project, which sought to address the sharp increase in fuel prices following the 1973 oil crisis. The GE36 promised a 30% reduction in fuel consumption compared to the airliner engines of the time without compromising cruise speed. It featured a pair of six-stage contra-rotating free turbines connected to eight-blade, 12-foot diameter unducted fans. The effective bypass ratio was estimated to be about 30 to 1, significantly higher than the turbofans of that era, but less than the bypass ratios of turboprops. Flight tests for the GE36 began in the late 1980 using a Boeing 727 testbed aircraft. However, despite its innovative design and potential for improved fuel efficiency, 
Both engines were canceled due to challenges of noise levels and the complexity of the technology, including the reliability of the gearbox featured on the 578 Delta X-Ray. Even Boeing's 7J7 project, which aimed to harness open rotor technology and succeed the iconic 727 aircraft, was also canceled due to the cancellation of the engines, despite its innovation and in design like the usage of space-age materials or the fly-by-wire cockpit with sticks instead of yokes. Despite historical challenges, modern advancements in materials, design, and computational technology have renewed interest in open rotor engines, making the CFM rise not only possible but also desirable. Safran's development of an open rotor concept with noise levels comparable to modern turbofans has marked a significant breakthrough. In 2017 and 2019, Safran developed and conducted trials on a novel open rotor engine design. This engine shared a resemblance with the GE36 unducted fan, but it was distinct in that it employed a gearbox to manage its pair of counter-rotating fans. The crux of the matter is that, owing to a series of advancements in both design and materials, Safran has announced that this engine's noise output is on par with that of the most current CFM LEAP engines. Moreover, General Electric, in collaboration with Safran on the Open Rotor Initiative since 2017, achieved a design breakthrough by streamlining the engine structure. This innovation replaced the dual counter-rotating fans with a solitary fan followed by a stationary set of adjustable stator vanes. The advantage of this single fan configuration is the integration of a simpler, more reliable gearbox similar to those long employed in turboprop engines. This reconfiguration not only simplifies the engine's mechanics, but is also anticipated to contribute to further noise reduction. Such simplification has been instrumental in the development of the CFM rise. The CFM Rise is poised to revolutionize the industry with its advanced open fan architecture expected to deliver a 20% improvement in fuel efficiency over current engines and fly at speeds up to Mach 0.8 with a noise signature meeting future regulations. This design allows for a substantial increase in propulsive efficiency compared to traditional turbofan engines. Besides, this engine will be the first to introduce hybrid electric technologies for single-aisle propulsion systems, optimizing engine performance by providing additional electric thrust and generating electricity for both the engine and the aircraft. In terms of environmental sustainability, the RISE engine is designed to be fully compatible with 100% sustainable aviation fuels and hydrogen, aiming to reduce carbon dioxide emissions by up to 80%. This commitment to sustainability aligns with the aviation industry's broader goals of reducing carbon emissions and minimizing the environmental impact of air travel. The adaptability of the RISE engine is another remarkable aspect, as it can be integrated into various airliner configurations thanks to the reduction in the fan diameter. To meet the target cruise speed of around Mach 0.8, CFM slightly decreased the RISE engine's fan diameter compared to earlier models, this reduction aids aircraft designers significantly in terms of engine installation processes and choices. Historically, open fan engines had to be mounted at the rear of the aircraft, as seen with the MD-80 or DC-9, which influenced Boeing's design choice for the 7 Jesm. However, CFM states that the RISE engine is designed to be compatible with both high-wing and low-wing aircraft configurations. This adaptability presents opportunities for innovative aircraft designs and enhanced operational flexibility, potentially transforming the future landscape of the aviation industry. With ground tests expected to commence in the middle of this decade and flight tests in the latter half starting from 2026, the CFM RISE represents a transformative leap forward in aircraft propulsion technology, embodying the spirit of innovation that drives the aviation. These tests will be conducted on an A380-based testbed, according to the Airbus announcement. Notably, Airbus is in the process of equipping an supper jumbo jet for experiments with hydrogen-powered turbofans and fuel cells, a task that involves extensive modifications to integrate a hydrogen fuel system into the aircraft. This effort is particularly pertinent as CFM intends to conduct tests of the RISE engine using hydrogen as well. Therefore, the availability of an A380 equipped to handle hydrogen will prove to be extremely beneficial for this purpose. If these tests could successfully help the engine enter service, there would be a considerable possibility that the first aircraft manufacturer to adapt this new engine type will be Airbus. And if Airbus can do so, 
it would be once again one step ahead of Boeing. In conclusion, the CFM rise represents a transformative leap forward in aircraft propulsion technology, embodying the spirit of innovation and collaboration that drives the aviation industry forward. With its potential to revolutionize efficiency, sustainability, and performance, the RISE engine stands poised to shape the future of flight for generations to come.